I've put a salary cap on the top five leagues in Europe. The Premier League, the Bundesliga, La Liga, Serie A and Ligue 1. And today we're going to simulate into the future to find out what effect this salary cap has on these leagues and European football as an extension. As you can see, every single club is limited to £400,000 per week or a total of £21 million across the season. I can hear all of you asking in the comment section, Tom, why did you choose £21 million to spend across the season? And the answer is because I can't do maths. When creating this experiment, I wanted clubs to be able to spend half a million pounds per week on wages. So if clubs were going to spend a million pounds per week on wages across 52 weeks of the year, that would be 52 million. So all I have to do is do 52 divided by 2. Obviously that equals 26, 26 million. But in my infinite wisdom at the time, I put 21 million pounds down. So that's where we've got 400,000 pounds per week. I don't understand it, bro. What is crucial though is that this salary cap is only for domestic leagues. It doesn't actually count towards cup or continental competitions. So if I met myself the manager of PSG for example, Messi's on 1.2 million pounds per week. He can't actually fit into the team at all because he's over that 400,000 pound limit. The same with Neymar and the same with Mbappe. You can see here on the squad registration for league uh, maximum squad salary 400,000 pounds per week and there's a lot of players missing out on this list because they just cannot reach that. People like Kimpe Ramos and Donnarumma. What they can do though is play them in Europe and in cup competitions. So it'll be interesting to see throughout this experiment if clubs like PSG do pay some big wages for some world-class players literally just for the Champions League. So we're going to start off by simulating a year into the future to see the very short-term impacts. So we'll start off by looking at the Premier League and as you can see Man United have won the title ahead of Arsenal. Man City, who are obviously always favourites to win the title, down in sixth. Not a great season for them. What is interesting though is that Man United have decided to keep Sancho on the book despite his wages costing £250,000 per week. That's ridiculous. What is interesting though is that some different players are coming up in the top scorers. Huang for West Ham, who I think is signed for them in-game uh, from Bordeaux for £2.7 million. He ends up being the top scorer. So if we look at the Man United squad and sort it by appearances, obviously Sancho played virtually every single game possible this season, but they've had to make some really big sacrifices to the team and also bring in some new players to try and fit in with the wage structure. They brought in Karsdorp, for example, who's played 46 games across the season, only on £27,000 per week. If we have a look at Pogba, he was not selected in that team squad. He played zero Premier League games across the season, but did make six appearances in cup and continental competitions. The same for Bruno Fernandes, zero games played in the Premier League, but 14 in other competitions. Liverpool went on to win the Champions League. Obviously, they would do that because they've still got their best players under contract. They can't play in the Premier League, but they can play in the Champions League, so they went on to beat Bayern Munich in the final. I think as we get to the medium term, 10 years into the future, we're going to start to see this start to switch. So, 10 years into the future and the first really interesting thing that I've noted is that the top five leagues we put the salary cap on are still the top five leagues based on reputation in football manager which is surprising because despite the £400,000 per week salary cap that these clubs have got it suggests they are still having good enough teams to do well in Europe. Having a look at Bayern Munich's team right now, I'm sorting it by current ability here and there are still some quality players happy to play on some fairly cheap wages in order to be registered and be able to play in the Bundesliga. I mean Pembele and Fafana are top quality players, they are really sacrificing their wages to play for a Bayern Munich. But on £33,500 per week and Fafana is on £44,000 per week, it does suggest that they are happy to take that wage cut. I am really interested to look at some of the national teams from around the world, such as France who have got some top quality players sort it by age because of course at this stage some of the wonder kids right at the start of the game are still playing 10 years in the future and see where they are so Kylian Mbappe the biggest one for example he went straight from PSG very quickly to sporting in Portugal and has stayed there ever since. Now he's on much cheaper wages than he could have been at PSG, £160,000 per week, and at 32 years old, potentially in his prime, maybe could have been on a little bit more. But this is interesting because these are this is players essentially ignoring the club's reputation. PSG is still gonna have one of the biggest reputations in the game. In fact, we can double check this. PSG's reputation, 9,441 out of 10,000. Rather than play for a top reputation club on cheap wages, he's going to sporting a club with lesser reputation but can offer him a lot more money. That's that's really interesting. Sporting's reputation, by the way, 7,585. Teo Hernandez is at Zenit. You've got Gunduzi. He looks like he's playing currently in Mexico, interestingly. Uh, Chuamane is actually at Liverpool on £32,000 per week. 
what a cheap deal. Thomas Lamar also actually at Liverpool on £34,000 per week. So there are some players clearly out there who want to play for these high reputation clubs like Liverpool on small wages. Although he only has just moved to Liverpool, he spent a long time at PSV and I presume earning a lot more money at PSV. I've also got a list of real players still playing in 2031, 10 years in the future, sorted it by current ability and you can see which clubs they're at and how much money they're earning. So Kylian Mbappe currently at Sporting, as we said, on £160,000 per week. Haaland went to Besiktas only on £88,000 per week, but I guess that is the best deal that he can get out there. Donnarumma at Ajax, uh, De Ligt at PSV Eindhoven, Sancho at Ajax, Alfonso Davis at Lokomotiv Moscow, João Felix at Dynamo Kiev, Trent at Ajax, Kimmich is at Galatasaray, De Jong is at PSV, so on so forth. Bastoni also at uh, Sporting alongside Mbappe. So Sporting, I feel like they must be a powerhouse right now. Interestingly, Inter Milan are paying nearly £300,000 a week for Matteo here. Why? Because... He hasn't played at all in his past season. Oh, interesting. You can see here that Roma and Inter have been bouncing up and down between Serie A and Serie B. So in Serie B, there is no wage structure or anything like that. They can spend as much as they want in Serie B, but Inter did that. They got to Serie A, and they, and they cannot actually play him. Always some very questionable finances in Italian football. And in the Champions League, we're starting to see that switch between the usual suspects who are in the Champions League and the new clubs who have got the money and the players now to start winning the Champions League. So Ajax have won two and Porto have won one. Salzburg came runners up one year. Ren did very well to come runners up one year to PSG. But this is interesting. I think we're going to start to see Ajax and Porto clearly win a lot of Champions Leagues. Also, before we jump in the future again, just a quick one from me. Uh, we are really bearing down on 40,000 subscribers now. Would love it if you guys could subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already because 75% of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed. I'd love to change that number to more in the other direction. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do. We'd love to have you on board. And 35 years into the future, we are starting to see some changes to the competition reputation rankings. The Portuguese top four Flight is now the most reputable league in all of Europe, followed up by La Liga and then the Premier League in third. The Eredivisie is in fourth, Bundesliga in fifth, Ligue 1 in sixth. The Turkish Super League jumped up to seventh, but Serie A has dropped the most by dropping to eighth. I tell you what, I am very surprised that the wage cap affected leagues have not dropped down lower. I'm so impressed that Spain and England's top flights are still in the top three. But the Champions League is now pretty much dominated by Porto, Sporting, Shakhtar, interestingly, and Ajax. They're all the clubs that have won it. In fact, no one else has won it. It's just those four. So have we created a system that's potentially more restricting than it was previously with the current system of uncapped leagues in England, Spain, France, Germany, Italy, for example. Like, it just feels like we've created a brand new elite of clubs in Portugal and the Netherlands and Ukraine. There's the odd German and Spanish club coming through with Dortmund and Villarreal getting to finals, but it really is dominated. Uh, Galatasaray getting up there as well, a Turkish club, and Besiktas too, I should mention. Uh, they're also right up there, but it seems to be dominated by the Portuguese and Dutch clubs. And if we look at Porto, their average wage for all their players is just under £82,000 per week. I am Max's average wage is only £30,000 per week and Sporting's is £64,000 per week. On the flip side, clubs like Man United, they are currently on £26,000 per week average wage. Liverpool, £14,000 per week average wage. Barcelona, £15,000 per week average wage. Dortmund, £20,000 per week average wage. And AC Milan on £8,600 per week as the average wage. Domestically, things haven't changed massively. Juventus are still probably the dominant force here in Italy right now, but a few few other clubs like Benevento, Sassuolo and Lazio getting to the title. Benevento's really impressive by the way. The Premier League it's the usual suspects sprinkled in with a Southampton and a Brentford and a Tottenham every now and again. Spain appears to be overtaken by Atletico Madrid first and then Villarreal afterwards but Betis and Vigo also picking up the odd title. The Bundesliga seems to be the most varied so far. You've got teams like Dortmund, Hoffenheim, Gladbach, uh, Bayer Leverkusen, Bayern Munich and Hertha Berlin all picking up titles. But in Ligue 1, uh, PSG still winning titles but so are Monaco, Lyon, Nice, Rennes so actually maybe the Bund and Marseille too so maybe the Bundesliga and Ligue 1 are the most successful ones at having different title winners. So what have we learned from this experiment? Well putting on a severe league salary cap has really changed the scope of European football. Domestically it makes things a lot more competitive. I think we've seen a lot more different winners and varied winners across different leagues but in terms of continental football we've actually made it 
even more boring than it is in real life. Literally, what was it? Porto, Sporting, Ajax, basically the only teams capable of winning a Champions League. So let me know down in the comment section what you would have done differently. Are there ways in which you think we can make this experiment even more interesting? And if it's a really good idea, we could do it in the future. Make sure you do drop a like on this video for me, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. I will see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.